What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Rat2501 here. Uh, returning to something I actually kind of forgot about even, alright? These are the Weapon Stereotypes by um, Soundsmith. Alright, this is episode 10, The Spy. Alright, I never got around to this. And that's probably, I think I was daunted because this is really long. This episode is the longest ever. It's almost 20 minutes. Alright, so, and that's not just a long time recording for me, that also translates usually into about six hours of rendering, in which case, I, during that time, I can't use my computer. Anyway, so uh, let's get this party started. Let's go. The spy is one of those classes that I really wish was less cool on paper. You know, he's so appealing <laughs> yeah. to everyone that most new players instantly gravitate towards him, leading to most pub servers being filled with a bunch of spies who don't even know how the disguise kit works and just run at people trying to butter knife them. On the other hand, though, or the a epic good spy spies can are be the biggest nuisance your team has ever come across yeah. in the entirety of their time the playing ass. TF2. I feel like the spy is one of those classes with the biggest difference between a terrible player and an amazing player. Except maybe Sniper. Anyway, as always, stereotypes don't apply to everyone. This series is heavily exaggerated for the sake of comedy. Don't take it seriously. Blah, 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 blah disclaimer. Blah, yeah, blah, exactly. Blah, blah. Don't be such, a, don't idea, be such right? a snowflake. Okay, let's go. Don't be such a woman. The spy. Gentlemen. The stock revolver is kind of amazing. It's the perfect example of consistency and can put out really decent damage if you know how to use it properly. It kind of sucks then that it's completely overshadowed by the ambassador. You'd think the stereotype for this would be people using this can't aim, you know, since otherwise they'd be using the ambassador. But I've found that a spy who actively uses the stock revolver can hit shots way more consistently Damn. than most ambi spies. Unless you're me. I'm the exception to this one. I just can't aim. Okay, that's a really bad demo night. This is an insanely good utility and probably my most used revolver for spy, but once again, it's completely overshadowed by the ambassador. This guy knows every ammo location on every map and will probably stay invisible for 90% of the match even if he isn't using the cloak and dagger. Because of this though, he probably takes similar routes every single life and will very often fall into the trap of spy time. He also struggles with using other revolvers since he's used to that increased amount of cloak. If the other yeah. team has one of these guys, try to keep track of when they spawn and make sure to randomly spy check hallways, corners, and choke points every now and then. I guarantee you you'll there. piss them off pretty quickly. <laughs> Bink. This weapon is actually really good. Some would even call it overpowered. I mean, hell, you get free crits just for doing things a spy should be doing anyway. People who use the Diamondback recognize this and abuse the hell out of it. Fortunately, though, it's once again overshadowed by the Ambassador. It's a good the thing most spy mains are too busy oh, yeah, jerking yeah, at the VODs of a... I was say, I have to look at that one. M Look at that. <laughs> I like praying it. You got the two uh, dead ringers there. What the hell? And that doesn't look right with the handle. That just looks wrong on every level. Ambassador. It's a good thing most spy mains are too busy jerking it to VODs of Akuma. Otherwise, the Diamondback would be a way more common choice and would be even more annoying of a problem than it already is. As it stands, though, if you see a spy with a Diamondback, just be prepared for bullshit, because there is an approximately 75% chance that halfway through your fight with him, some random dispenser across the map will finish sapping and he'll get a crit out of nowhere. Hmm. You know, I would say this is overshadowed by the Ambassador, but that kind of implies that it has good qualities to begin with. Well, I mean, I guess it used to be really good, but now its primary upside is bugged and only works in about half of its intended use cases, so now it's just a shittier stock revolver. If you see a spy uh. using the Enforcer, he's probably just going on a little nostalgia trip reminiscing about the days when it was stupid OP, or he's just got a Crits Creek medic pocketing him, which I have to admit is pretty fun. <laughs> the Ambassador. Wait, 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 what's that say? I have to admit is pretty fun. For a ton of people just look in the description. <laughs> Interpretation. All right, the court is now in session. Honorable Judge Sam Smith now presiding. Hey guys, sit, sit down, sit down. I, I don't call me honorable. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing here. Uh, okay, uh, now calling for the record the case awesome. of pretentious spy mains v everybody else, civil case number one zero two. Counsel, please identify yourselves for the record. I'm Maxbox on behalf of the plaintiff. I'm Spurgy on behalf of the defense. Okay, excellent. Are there any housekeeping oh, matters God. that we need to take care of before the trial starts? <laughs> yes, this is you're awesome. Right. As the representative of skilled spy mains everywhere, we request to be given double the time for the defense for opening statements. According to Article 264,933-C, the time allotted what? for opening statement should be directly proportional to the average skill of the represented groups. Objection! First of all, that's fucking stupid. 
first. <laughs> Second of all, that's not even a real law. Well, it should be. You're not even using the ambassador. That obviously means you can't aim worth a damn. Just because you use a gun like a headshot doesn't mean you can actually hit them. I bet you couldn't even hit the broadside of a barn with that thing. What is that? An Australian ambassador with 5,000 kills on it? Your headshots part isn't even past 100. I just put Ooh. on that part yesterday, thank you very much. What, just Bullshit. because you think that, that you're not you using the ambassador? Maybe hit one or two uh, headshots. Guys, guys, the head. uh, no, that's not it the trial all. hasn't even started yet. Are you serious right now? So this is by far one of the most divisive stereotypes I've ever covered. About 50% of the comments I read and people I talked to said that the ambassador is a weapon for the most skilled of skilled spy mains, and Dude. everyone who uses it should be regarded Dude, weapon for the most skilled of skilled spy mains, and... Huge inhale because I'm terrible at managing my breath while her voice will work Everyone who uses it should be regarded as a god amongst men. And the other 50% said that it was a huge war pig. So everyone who uses it thinks they're a god amongst men, but in reality can't hit the broadside of a barn. Shit. I've honestly never Shit. seen such an even first try. stereotype. There you go. I think what it boils down to is that if somebody uses the ambassador religiously, then their opinion falls into the first category, but more often than not, their actual skill will fall into the second category. On the other hand, if someone doesn't use the ambassador 100% nice. of the time, then they know how to play to their strengths but they also probably struggle with aiming and hitting headshots. One thing that's for sure, though, is that if you see an ambassador spy, he's absolutely going to try to use it on you and get those sick frag video clips. Is it... <laughs> okay, Sapper let's be real. 90% of spies use the stock sapper or some reskin of it. This is because the and... only other option is kind of terrible. So, <laughs> there's honestly not that much of a stereotype for this one. The research I did yeah. was largely inconclusive since everyone basically said but something to the effect of this guy is smart enough to not use the red tape recorder. The red tape recorder. So there are two types of red tape recorder spies. Those who don't know what it does and those who realize that it fucking sucks. Okay, in all <laughs> honesty, this is sorta kind of maybe useful in two situations. One is fighting mini sentry engies. Most gunslinger engies just let a sapper run its course. I mean, hell, after you're done, you can just slam down another one really easily. So like, why even bother? Because of this, a sapper that takes longer to complete can actually work to your advantage since the total uptime of his mini is gonna be lower. Okay, number two is suicide plays. You know the ones. Suicide. The ones where you're on CTF-2 fork oh, and there God. are 50 billion NGs all turtling with level threes in the Holy intel room. And shit. every time you go down there, you just get instantly shut down because there are just so many NGs all hunting you down and there's nothing you can do. The Dude, regular this entire just makes team of NGs. So a couple of swings of the wrench will undo that in a heartbeat. But in this situation, at least the red tape recorder does something. I mean, it'll at the very least degrade each building you sat by one level and it's easier for your team to deal with 50 billion level two sentries than it is for them to deal with 50 billion level 3 centuries. Plus, it's annoying as hell to deal with since it's a huge time waster. So in those two very specific situations, very it's specific. maybe useful. Otherwise, it just sucks. So if you see a red okay, tape yeah. recorder spy, chances are he's it. either clueless and, or just trying to annoy the anyway. Knife. Like most stock weapons, the knife is a jack-of-all-trades kind of deal. Most spies using this are is. not trying to do one specific thing, and they're not trying to counter one specific thing. They're just playing spy. I have noticed that Australian knife spies tend to take themselves oh, way shit, too seriously. Oh shit, he killed him! Just a kind of random trend I noticed when it came to the comments on the last video. Anyway, if you see a stock knife spy, just be prepared for anything. And by anything, I mostly mean them trying to butter knife you a lot, but, like, also some other stuff, I guess. I don't know. Really? You couldn't see him? So this the is a reskin, dresser. but it has a oh, really yeah. widespread stereotype, so I'm gonna go over it separately. Nice. This guy is the oh-so-popular 13-year-old Assassin's Creed fanboy. <laughs> this guy <laughs> thinks he's go, really man. cool and takes himself very seriously. The problem is, nobody else takes him seriously. Yeah, he also no. probably has one of those Assassin's Creed-style trench coats in real life uh, that doesn't look nearly as cool on him as it did in the promotional images. In TF2, yeah. you'll see these guys wearing the Dash and Hass um the, the Assassin's Creed hat most of the time, and they'll go. very frequently go for huge leaping trick stabs. You know, I actually met a guy once who would mic spam an ear rape version of the Eagle Screech from the Assassin's Creed games <laughs> every time he would jump off of a high place. It was, uh, it was really stupid, but it was also pretty funny. I just wish I hadn't told KJ about this because now he's taken to using the sharp dresser a lot and doing that exact thing. Doing that exact same thing. <laughs> Volume warning. <laughs> Wait, what the? <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> this guy puts way too much faith in his disguise. Sadly, disguises really aren't as good of a tool as they once were since they just don't fool that many people anymore. Not even the instant disguise that this weapon offers is really convincing. You'll often see these guys jumping in and going for huge chain stabs on the payload only to find that nobody is buying their disguise and either dying or just popping their dead ringer to get out. Yeah, they just kill you. So, the Canivus Kunai, it's primarily being used by people oh, that appreciate the self-sustain it can give you as a reward for careful positioning and timing. Yeah, <laughs> not really. Okay, who am I kidding? This is a Soundsmith video. All right, <laughs> see those spies? Yeah, those right there. Jamas Chapeau stereotype die-hard trick stabbers that worship the Ambi. Yeah, those Dude, you guys see that thing everywhere, love man. the Kunai. Two reasons. Number one is pretty awesome. Weeb jokes. <laughs> there you go, man. Number two, they think that with the kunai and dead ringer, they're pretty much invincible while trick stabbing a whole team. Look, this is what they think they look like. Oh god. And boom, boom, and boom, boom. Dude, he seriously just this, took out the entire uh, team. This is how they actually look like about 99% of the time. <laughs> is he trying to prepare for a... I'm afraid not. Was he trying to prepare, like, turn around the, the guy was going to come towards him? actual war pig, but hell. If the ambassador gets the gun spot <laughs> for a war pig, then this them. one right here is the knife <laughs> among them. Yeah. <laughs> Big earner, no. please, Ethan. Ethan, you're zoomed by Tim Allen. No, go away. I don't. I don't want to be zoomed by Tim Allen. Good five health. No. If only I could aim the revolver. Stop chasing me with your zoomed by Tim Allen. Allen. Go away. No Zoom by Tim Allen. What the hell? I had a dream last night where I broke a kid's toy and I had to buy him a new one. Oh yeah. He broke his zoomed by Tim Allen DVD. <laughs> no. Zoomed by Tim Allen DVD. Okay, Tim Allen had to do with it. Wait, really? <laughs> what yes, the hell? I'm not even fucking with you. This is due to all of oh our my shenanigans God. last night. So <laughs> was I broke a kid's toy. So I had to break into a compound, a drug dealer's compound, to get to the only ATM oh in the area. What the crap? Wait, buy the kid a new okay. toy because it wouldn't accept my car. So what does Tim Allen have to do with this? Just wait. It gets better. Just wait? wait? Oh my compound. God. What? Yes, it's Tim oh Allen. Oh my God. He's the drug <laughs> hey, you want some of that Zoom? I'm not oh, even fucking That doesn't with sound him. right. I'm not even KJ, go away. No. He wouldn't KJ, speak. KJ, this stop. This is the best part, right? <laughs> no. KJ, go oh, away. Oh, wait, that was a back to you. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Fuck off. Like, <laughs> you guys might be thinking I'm joking. I'm not. This is completely serious. This didn't happen in my dream. He okay. also what? didn't speak English. He only talked in grunts. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so he was like, Tim <laughs> Allen was a fucking Neanderthal drug dealer who would just talk in grunts. <laughs> 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 He just laughing with his mouth. No, no, I got zoomed by Tim Allen. And I'm gonna... That's so great. And I'm gonna tell you something that... What the crap? And then all I knew was that I ran into him, he just talked in grunts, and then the dream ended. That was the first time in my entire life that I woke up laughing. That's what happened. Woke up laughing from a dream. That's gonna be like so damn random. Can we like have you that conversation? Can we just like have like for the for the freaking figure of stereotype? Can we just like literally just like yes. have this conversation just be recorded? Yes. And you start laughing like get ready. You you, you think you. I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna fucking do it, dude. <laughs> I know that probably did didn't make any sense whatsoever, but I promised I'd put it in. So there you go. Okay, so the big earner tends to be used by spies who really like going for chain stabs, or spies who have trouble getting away after they get a single stab. It's really not that common of a choice to see, since it puts you below the 100 damage threshold, meaning you can be one shot by soldiers, demos, and scouts. So usually. Big earner spies yeah. will be either completely clueless and just give you free kills for the most part, or they're comfortable enough with their acting, movement, and cloak management to get that first stab. Okay. Spicicle. This guy just hates pyros. Yeah. You know, come to think of it, there are a lot of weapons that seem to be designed the pyro specifically is the natural to enemy pyro. Of a spy. Anyway, another thing to keep in mind is that this guy is gonna get tons of face stabs on you. I've heard rumors that it actually has a slightly longer range than the other knives. Not like Islander huh. levels of range, but it's just enough to get face stabs way yeah. more than other knives. Now, I didn't really find anything to support this. I just heard a couple people mentioning it offhand, but I have noticed that I do tend to get face stabbed more against this. Of course, according to Spicicle Spies, it wasn't a face stab. It was an over under C2C 
matador stair corner random Latin word they threw in so people would think they're smart stab. You just, you just need Latin to get word. good, obviously. This guy's kid. This well, is that's another common. one of those items that I have to go over, even though literally everyone uses this. Yeah. There's not really a stereotype associated with the disguise kit itself, except maybe a spy crab, but I guess we can go over the spy two crab. most there obvious types of people associated with disguises in general. First, we've got this guy. I don't think he's quite figured out that his cunning and masterful plan of disguise as scout and run straight at the entire enemy team isn't really fooling anyone. Yeah. And then we've got this guy, who just graduated at the top of his class in the fucking Daniel Day Lewis school of method acting. Despite the fact that disguises are generally a pretty crappy tool, he somehow managed manages to fool everyone. I, don't know, I guess the only time disguises <laughs> stick out is if they're hilariously bad or terrifyingly good. Dude, he cut up that scout like instantly. Same deal here, actually. Stockwatch spies are usually either really bad or really good. Since Dude, it's a seriously? Stock, actually, stockwatch spies are usually either really bad. Let me see what that says real quick. Most telegraph corner stab in the history of ever. Oh. Good. Since it's a stock weapon, you'll probably see a lot of these guys bumping into everyone, running out of cloak at horrible times, and just generally doing everything they can to get discovered. But good stock watch spies? Oh man, don't even bother trying to catch these guys. They know exactly where you're gonna go and how to avoid you, and can perfectly maneuver through an entire team of enemies without being discovered. I'm still pretty bad at this myself, but one of the most satisfying things to do as spy is to escape certain death with your own movement and skill, and not <laughs> by just pressing right click and being halfway across the map instantly. We now return to our Cloak feature presentation, dagger. Inside the Mind of a Cloak and Dagger Spy. Oh my god. Now what? Oh man, lately I've just been having so much trouble staying alive as spy. Whenever I cloak and try to get to safety, my cloak runs out, revealing my thick yet fragile body. The other thick yet watch fragile thing doesn't body. even make me invisible when I open it. I think it's broken. But on the bright side, I found this other watch that allows me to wait in one spot until the exact precise time for me to strike. I can literally stand in one spot and only move if someone's gonna accidentally walk into me. I can't get killed if the enemy never sees me. This guy's yeah. style is much more slow and methodical than most other spies. And by that, I mean yeah. he's gonna be in the same friggin' corner for the entire match. Lots of cloak and dagger spies have trouble managing their cloak with other watches, so they'll spend a lot of time standing still and recharging their watch in a hotly contested area. Oh, this damn. is also why most of the time you find a cloaked spy with this watch, your first reaction is probably gonna be something along the lines of, what the hell were you even doing there? Regardless, this weapon is pretty fun to use when you're messing with people, and it's nice when you're up against a team that's pretty aware and you need to pick and choose your time Hi, to be carefully. You're still not yeah, gonna get him. that much done though. Yeah, he got killed by the, by the oh, sentry. Oh boy. Oh man, where do I even start with this thing? Okay. Uh, okay wait, wait, wait. Oh, this? He I forgot. What's he talking still about? Not this gonna one? get that much done though. Oh, the dead ringer. Oh mm. boy. Oh man, where do I even start with this thing? Okay. Uh, hang on, I've got an idea. <clears throat> Fuck this weapon. The Dead Ringer is one of the most hated weapons in all of TF2, surpassing even the reserve shooter. Nearly every single person I talked to said that this weapon was a huge crutch for spies who have no game sense and can't stay alive on their own. Well, I'm not sure if it fits the technical definition of a crutch or not. Yeah, huh? Crutch. Something helps bad players, but haters good players. Not viable at high levels of play. Something that uses a set of training wheels to but say for lack of skill, ultimately hindering the player in the long run. Oh uh, my God. Most Deadringer spies you run into will definitely be using it as one. That is to say, they don't try and be tricky and feign their own death at all. They just run straight into the entire enemy team and use it as a get out of jail free card. It's a safety net, essentially. Fortunately though, it's getting nerfed into the ground in the pyro update, or at least it was going to be based on the balance changes that were released a few months ago, which is a huge relief. Now I'm sure there are going to be a bunch of spy mains defending this thing religiously in the comment section, and I'm sure they're gonna say something along the lines of, uh, uh, but Soundsmith, but Soundsmith spy needs this watch because he's such a bad class, Soundsmith, or whatever, right? But I, for one, want to have a class be viable without having to give him this annoying piece of shit. Fuck this <laughs> weapon. It's not even good. It's just annoying. Yeah, so this is actually Fuck. pretty old. So, dude, he's just, just like losing his shit right there. Bad spy mains actually have to I understand that the Dead Ringer isn't as good as it used to be. Dude, calm down. <laughs> Dude.
Dude, he just quit on us? He did. He was just like, you know, screw it all. Fuck it all. Fuck it all. Can't take this bullshit anymore. <laughs> Keep recording like that? Nope. Dude. It's one thing to rage quit a game, but he rage quit the whole freaking video. And he's just gonna march the spy. Yep, the spy's just gonna dance right into the pit. Is that it? Oh, there was something at the end. Dang it. I'm trying to catch this stupid thing. It's literally on there for like a tiny fraction of a second. It's a whole damn paragraph, and I want to know what it says. Damn it. Dude, that thing is literally on there for just the tiniest fraction of a second. Holy shit. Okay, wait. Random frame of text at the end of your... That you probably thought contained an important message of some kind. Or maybe a tease about the next stereotype series. Sorry. This black... This block of text is utterly and... Totally useless. Oh, you son of a... I spent all that time trying to get it. Okay, well, he got me. All right, guys, so that was The Weapon Stereotypes, Episode 10, The Spy. I do hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, <laughs> enjoyed my little hunt, try to grab that, and it didn't pop up. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to me. Of course, don't forget to click on the link to the original. Get down to Soundsmith and give the original video a like and subscribe to him. I'll see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Don't forget about my stream coming up. Bye-bye.